Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover what I wasn't able to cover in part six, which is going to be replacing conditionals with the strategy pattern, as well as other ways to use the strategy pattern. And also, a whole bunch of questions came up about the guard clause. I'm going to cover that again at the very end of this tutorial. It's very simple. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so all of this code here is available in a link underneath of the video, and you should get it if you want to really understand the strategy pattern. And also I provide a link to the strategy pattern above if you want to take a look at that. I did a design pattern tutorial on it. Now let's get into it here. I'm going to show you an example of why you would need the strategy pattern. Now very often, like we're going to do here in this program where we're going to calculate salary, for example, you're going to have to figure out pay differently for different employees. And very often, using old techniques, you would perform many conditional checks to see if an employee would get a bonus or not get a bonus, or if the bonus amount would change, how it would have changed the overall pay, or you may have to go and add additional conditions if a new bonus condition comes up, and you can get into all kinds of problems. The strategy pattern, as you're gonna see here, is going to eliminate most of those problems. And I'm actually not gonna just jump in here and create an absolute terrible piece of code. I'm gonna write something that you think would work, and then go through why it wouldn't. So down here we have class employees, and I'm just going to go private, and I'm going to define a Boolean, and it is going to be bonus, whether they get a bonus or not, and I'm gonna set it as false here in the very beginning, and then I'm going to also create another one, and it is gonna be salary, and it's gonna be some sort of double that's going to be defined, and let's move that up so we can see exactly what's going on here, and then what are we gonna to need to do? Well, we're gonna to have to create a constructor for this guy, so I'm just gonna go into source here and have it create my constructor constructor using fields and bonus and salary are going to be two of those fields and I'm going to hit OK and it's going to create that. And then let's say that we also want to throw another constructor in here that basically just does nothing. OK, so we have those defined and everything looks like it's going really, really well. So if we want to calculate our salary, we're just going to go double get salary or get pay, whatever. I'm just going to leave this get salary. You understand what I'm doing here. Then what I would do is throw a conditional in here that's going to be bonus and this doesn't look bad. And if there is a bonus, we're going to say, and we're going to guess that all the bonuses are the same. Everybody is going to get a 15% bonus if they get a bonus. And I think you can start to see what's going on here. But you're thinking, ah, there's a way to fix that. And then you can just go in the circumstance where that isn't true, just send back the salary itself. And then let's say that we also want to come in here and maybe go and create a void set salary. And it just gets a double and it's going to set my salary for me. And then this salary is equal to salary. All right. And everything seems pretty good and it's not terrible. So let's go up here and start playing around and see what goes on. Because remember, I said I didn't want this just to be a mess, just to say it's a mess and then try to fix it. Now, the major problem here is everything is going to work as long as there are no changes. Now, of course, I could make subclasses to eliminate the need for the bonus boolean that we have here, but you're going to see that there's all kinds of other problems that come up. So let's say we create a salesman is equal to new employees, and let's say that they have a $15,000 salary, and then they get a bonus on their salary. And actually, this is going to be true, and then $15,000. Okay, so we got that set. And then let's say that we have a secretary, then she doesn't get a bonus but she gets a higher pay and this is also going to be here and then she's just going to have this marked as false and let's say that she gets 20,000 I don't know well then you could see that we could come in here and get our salesman print out his salary so salesman and then get salary is what we're going to use here and then we're pretty much going to do the same thing here for our secretary and if we save that and execute it you're going to see here salesman gets a payment of $17,250 and the secretary is going to get the two thousand dollars okay so everything seems to work however what happens if I need to change my bonus amount remember originally I had 15% for everybody well you're thinking okay well no big deal we're just gonna go down inside of here and we're gonna go private double and put bonus amount inside of it and let's say that it's going to be 15 percent just based off of that well that means i'm going to need to come in here and create a new constructor see i'm doing all kinds of code changes and here we're going to do double and type in bonus amount and then bonus amount we're going to have to add on to this bonus amount 
And then you have to start asking yourself, what happens if we want to create a totally new pay structure that doesn't have anything to do with bonuses? Maybe there's some other form of commission that we want to use. And that also means we're going to have to come down here inside of Get Salary, and we're going to have to eliminate this and instead put inside of here Bonus Amount. So we're making another additional change down there. And File Save, and now all these things are still going to kind of work, but now let's say that the bonus amount for the salesman is going to change, and let's say that he's doing 20% now instead. Well, you can see that we are able to use these calculations and make these changes. However, whenever we want to add a new feature, we need to go into the employees class and change a whole bunch of things. What the strategy pattern is going to do is it's going to allow us to not have to make any changes inside of employees, but instead, whenever we have a new way of calculating salary, just create a new class and it's automatically going to work. So let's take a look at exactly how that's going to work. Before we do, I just want to go through here because we're talking about conditionals and give you an example of just how bad this could get if we tried to do this with conditionals versus using classes. Well, we'd have to come in here and go if uh, salesman, for example, and then we could go gets bonus and code like this exists. I'm just not like I'm creating this out of whole cloth. But then what you'd need to do is go double and let's say you wanted to calculate pay amount and this is going to be equal to salesman again and then you'd have to get the salary from that, make another method call inside of there and then maybe do another salesman and then get salary and then multiply that times salesman and then go in here and get bonus amount out of that and then throw that onto that and then else and then put in a whole bunch of different things like I said let's decide we want to add a new way of bonusing people well we can't do that as you can see this gets extremely busy now imagine if you put that inside of here or worse yet if you would go up and put this inside of your main function this is when code gets to be completely unmanageable whenever you have conditional statements like that so now let's go in and look at the strategy pattern Okay, so I have this extremely long name, replace conditional with strategy, and I'm going to go through this. Like I said before, conditional logic is often used to decide which algorithm to use, just so you completely understand this, so you can use this in the real world. And the strategy design pattern is used to dynamically change those algorithms that are used by objects at runtime. And that is what makes it great for eliminating conditionals and eliminating a whole bunch of other problems. And basically all you need to do is create subclasses for each algorithm algorithm, both algorithms you know about today, and algorithms that could occur in the future, and that algorithm automatically at runtime can be added on to any object. And of course, this is just another example of how to replace conditionals with polymorphism, or a neat way to use polymorphism in general. So, we have basically the same sort of thing here, except we're going to define a class employee, and I went and put two very specific employee classes here, just to explain this more elaborately. So, let's say we wanted to do uh, protected double salary is equal to 0, 0.0 and I'm very happy that I did it this way. Now what we're going to do is we are going to use an instance of the pay interface which I'm going to create here in a second and what's great about it is that employee doesn't care what pay does and what this is going to do is allow the capabilities of objects like I said before to change at runtime and to do all kinds of cool things. So we're just going to go pay and we're going to call this pay type and by default we're going to give it a value of no bonus. So let me show you exactly what this interface is going to look like. So interface, and this is going to be pay, and this is going to be the extremely complicated definition for calculating pay, salary. There you go. Done. Isn't that awesome? One line. Then what we're going to do is for each different pay type, we're going to go class. Let's say there is gets bonus. Well, we're just going to go implement the pay interface, and then we just need to come in here and put get pay inside of it. And it's giving me an error right there it's saying add on implemented methods, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have it do the work for me. That's much better. Now, inside of this guy, now I can just go return, and it's going to be salary plus salary times, let's say that we wanted to put our 15% in there. I'm going to show you in a second how easy it's going to be to change that without adding anything to employees again. And then if we wanted to create another different type of pay class, like something that is no bonus, no problem, no bonus, 
And in this situation, we're just going to return salary. And it's just going to automatically work. Now, just to show you exactly how hard it's going to be to add a different bonus amount, let's say that we wanted to do a bonus amount that is 20%. There we go. We just did it. And now all we need to do is go in there and change that to 20. And all of these classes, every single time you want to add a different way of calculating pay or salary, all you need to do is create another one of these classes, implement it, and it's automatically going to work without doing anything with employee. So let's go back up into employee and play around with this. Now we're going to create employee and and it's just going to be passed over salary, which is very simple. And then, of course, we're going to go this salary is equal to whatever salary they sent over to us. There, that's done. And then if we wanted to also have them associate their pay type, of course, that's a piece of cake. Here we're going to have our salary passed over and also our pay type is going to be passed over. So we'll be able to calculate that as well. And what are we going to do? Just go like this, bang and bang. And then this is going to be pay type, which is going to be an object. And then we could also come in here and throw in another method that's going to allow us to set the bonus option. So we could on the fly change that. So just set bonus option right like that. And it's just going to receive a new pay type object that's going to be passed over to it. And then we'll just go pay type is equal to new pay type. So piece of cake. As you can see, it's going to be extremely easy to implement pay classes and change the pay amount without affecting any of the other parts of the program. So exactly how hard is it going to be to come down here inside of Salesman and create it? Well, let's just highlight this and add constructor. Click on that and then come in here and create the other constructor that's going to handle pay type. And here we can just go set bonus option and pass it pay type and it's automatically going to work. Of course, we need to put pay type in here and then to do exactly the same thing for our secretary. It's just going to be just as easy. Bang that in there and then change this to secretary instead of salesman. But on the fly, we could also change the salesman types and secretary types and everything. We're not in any way tied to anything. So that's what's great. It's flexible. Well, let's jump up into main and see exactly what kind of things we can do. So if we want to define an employee and let's just call him salesman is equal to new salesman. And we want to give him a salary of 15000 And then let's say we want to do the same type of thing here with secretary. And and let's say in this situation, so he gets 25,000. There we go. And let's bounce over here. System out print, just to save ourselves a little bit of time. Copy that, paste that in there. There we go. And in this situation, we're just gonna go get pay instead of get salary. And actually to keep this short, I'm gonna jump down here into my employee part right after set bonus option and just throw this inside of here, public double get pay like that and then just return pay type which is a reference to the object that's stored inside of there using composition and i'm just going to go like that save that and that's going to stream down into all these other guys and if we file save it and execute it you're going to see it calculates all that out which is really cool but remember by default i had everybody not getting bonuses so how hard is it to add a bonus to the salesman's salary at runtime well i just go salesman set bonus option and then i just pass in a new gets bonus pass in a new object to assign to it and if we call this salesman again you're going to see how his pay changed just with that one little line there dynamically there you are calculated that completely differently which is great you could also set the bonus type inside of the constructor just like we did before so let's say that i wanted to create a completely different way of doing this like let's do a sales trainee new salesperson have this be 15,000, just like before. And here we go, new, no, bonus, like that. And then calculate on the fly, salesman trainee, like that. File save it, execute it. There you can see, there's another way of calculating that. I just chopped off the bonus while this salesman gets a bonus. Should have put a space in there though, no problem. And then of course, I could come in here and do exactly the same thing and give my secretary a bonus on the fly. The secretary, file save, execute it. And there we are. So you can see just how easy it is dynamically and very easily just by passing over this new object of the interface pay that we created down inside of here to completely change everything without in any way affecting the employee classes. So that is why you use the strategy design pattern. Now let's get into the big question from the last tutorial, guard clauses. Now, whenever I put this together the last time with the guard clause, I didn't really expect to get people confused about it. Basically, the guard clause is just used to show the normal path of execution and make it very clear 
by eliminating the normal ins and outs whenever you use if then else statements. And this is how I showed it. It's actually in the real world, it's not normally used this way, it's used in another way. But you can see right here, whenever you program and you have for, and you have if, and then you have else, you're basically giving equal weight, which means you're saying it's just as likely that the bag's gonna be less than 50 pounds as it is likely that the bag is gonna be over 200 pounds or over 70 pounds in this situation. So if we thought it was just as likely that a bag would weigh less than 50 pounds as if it would weigh over 70 pounds, we wouldn't use the guard clause. However, in the real world, it doesn't make sense that people carry bags around that heavily. Okay, so this is kind of like something we're just using here to explain that whenever we do not use else statements, it means that we are not giving everything equal weight or equal likelihood of occurring as if we would use else statements. So that's why the guard clause is in there. Now why I think people got confused is the guard clause is normally not done this way. Rather, you're more likely to see the guard clause used in a method like I'm going to show you right here. So give example. All right, I'm going to give you an example. Int. Let's say we go get bag price. This is the way the guard clause is normally used. Then you're going to say something like double weight, int, and then put in the bag. And then I'm going to save myself from having to type out all this stuff. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to grab that if statement, paste it inside of here. And then normally what would occur in the real world is you would get rid of this altogether and instead end this method by going return. And then you would type in bag under 50 pounds, for example and then pass the bag, and then that would be sent back to the user of this method. Then again, that would end it. Then you would come in here and go, the bag weight is less than 70 pounds, and then put and, and this would actually be weight in this situation, like that, and then you would say bag weight greater than or equal to 50, and then a return statement, and that would end the method, or you could do something return 200. Okay, so this is how the guard clause is used, and all it it's used for is to make the code more readable, but also to emphasize that it's more likely that a bag is going to come through that weighs less than 50 pounds than it is likely that a bag is going to come through that weighs more than 70 pounds. So I hope that makes that completely understandable. Don't worry about it. It's not that confusing of a subject. I think it's confusing because it wasn't confusing. You guys are used to seeing me do more advanced things. So there is the strategy design pattern, and hopefully I've cleared up the whole guard clause issue. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.